Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dame and I am making a full beginner friendly Rebel tutorial. Um, I'm going to start not with my reference photo, but um, with a trick that I've learned from um, Mambobon. Mambobon on Instagram or Daniel Urbanis. <laughs> I was doing his um, domestica course and he had this really cool trick to um, change the colours on your reference photo. Uh, I've been using it all the time since. It's really cool. Um, if you want to check out uh, Daniel's uh, domestica course, I'll put that in my links. I highly recommend it, especially if you're uh, from a traditional background and love the traditional look in your digital art. It's really helped me. So I'm going on to Pexels for copyright free um, bit images. I'm looking for uh, very colourful painting effects. Um, this will all make sense later. Just looking for the colours I'm interested in and um, yeah, just having a play. This is what this video is about. It's just experimentation and seeing what works for you. So once I've found some cool patterns I like, I'm going to apply it to this reference photo. Uh, I like the lighting effect, so we want to try and capture the, the lighting, but I do want to bump up the colours and make it look less photographic in this piece. So I'm going to open Rebel 5 and select my canvas. Uh, you can have multiple different textures of canvases and colours. I'm going for a sort of tan, light tan colour this time, which is out with my usual norm. Usually I go for white. And then I'm going to import the reference photo that I've picked. It's also from Pexels. You can find lots of different um, copyright free um, images from Pexels. So really useful for people like me that uh, don't have the time nor energy to take my own reference photos, so need every resource we can get. So um, I'm just going to put the size that I think is most pleasing, not too, so quite a long photo, I'll try and crop it down a bit. And now I'm just looking for which one. I'm just going to grab one of the paintings I took earlier and chuck it on top. <laughs> then rotate it around. Help it make more sense. And then I'm gonna, this is on a separate layer as well. I'm holding down shift so that the um, the proportions don't change. It took me to ever figure that, forever to figure that out. Then I'm gonna go down into the, um, the settings here and changing them up and just seeing what happens up and down with the opacity and see how this top layer of painting affects the color underneath and see if I can work with it. This one's way too intense, so I'm not going with this one. Let's try a different one. I quite like this one when I first saw it because blue is my favorite color and there's some really bright blues in this one. So we'll see what it does when I import it and chuck it on top of this, of this photo and see what it does to the colors. I'm just gonna cycle through all these different ones and see what effects I end up with. See, I quite like it's leaving warmth on the face, but the colours I'm not so keen on. So I'm going to go into hue, saturation, lightness, and, and just mess around with the colours. And I think this range with more orange, orange and cerulean. I'm just there. You go. Pull that out a bit. I don't want her to look like she's got a bad skin condition. <laughs> I just want to add different colours and warmth to the face, and then change the colours of the photo and see what, yeah. It's been really fun doing this. Usually I just tend to um, have reference photos and not mess with them and then my colours end up really boring and because people ask me how do I make colour, good colour choices. I, I don't make good colour choices. I mess with photos and they make the colour choices for me. Um, I, you see amazing artists like Eliga Nuza and how she's able to pull really bright colours from any reference I'm not like that. I really struggle with colour choices, so this is a really fun way for me to experiment with colour. I've been trying to be more brave with it. Alright, once I've settled on colours, now we can move on to the fun part. I am going to put the photo on the canvas and then I'm going to use the T word and trace. <laughs> 
if this is a beginner friendly video remember so if you need to trace if proportions are the last thing on your mind and you're yeah you're very you're very new to this then trace go ahead i will not judge nor condemn because i've been painting for years and proportions are the worst so do what you need to do in this case for speed and as a beginner friendliness that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to do a very rough uh, outline over the main features make sure i get them in the right place let's say much better for efficiency's sake You're not cheating anyone by doing this. Everyone thinks it's cheating until they try drawing themselves. <laughs> so once I've, I'm using the pencil tool, I've got my opacity turned up to 100. Going around the main features, I don't want to, I'm really a stickler for details. Some of my work can end up quite photographic and I'm stepping away from it this time with a lot of effort. I'm one of those people that can overwork something to death and not leave it alone. I want to start being more expressive and being more loose with my work. Um, I want it to be one of those people that could be a super detailed concept artist kind of person and it's just never ended up that way. I'm far too messy an artist for that. So I'm just trying to, especially in my digital work, I want it to look more natural and a bit more loose and free. And that's what this one's all about. Just being free and having fun. Oh, and do you see the little pigment thing there? Click on it. Don't be a numpty and not click on it like I did last time thinking that I was, because that'll be your color blending. And last time I forgot to click it. So if you can imagine, go oh, the scandal. But it is clicked. That will help with color mixing on the next stage. Once my sketch is done, I'm going to make a new layer underneath. Oh yeah. Add my reference photo, one with the correct colours. Get myself all situated here. You can see I'm recording my time lapse in the top corner, which is a fun little addition to the Rebel 5. And here I am struggling with my windows. I could just edit that out, but I'm too lazy. All right, so now I've got my watercolour brushes sorted out finally. I'm going to go and colour pick some basic colours and then tweak them. You can see I've um, turned my colour wheel into blocks, which really helps me uh, see with the values in that. Wheels, uh, colour wheels I find a bit disorientating. Uh, disorientating? Disorienting, whatever you call it. <laughs> so um, I'm going to uh, grab some colours and mess with them a little bit and just try and get the mood using the watercolours as a good base. This has been really fun. I really like the, the lovely pastels that have come out of this with um, editing the, the photo because it was, it was just very green and very um, desaturated. So I think this has really helped make things a bit warmer and a bit prettier. So I'm just grabbing the the base colours and you can see, look how the, the paint is just like sliding down. I want that, I want it to look real. This is as close to and clean as real can get with me because if I'm, I don't have a studio space, I've got young kids all over the place. So if I ended up um, painting every day, you can imagine it would be a bit of a, not that it stops some people, but for me, you know, I have a day job and I have kids and it's trying, this is the this is why I love Rebel so much. It really helps me get get some lovely traditional looking work out there. I've added in a little bit of darks, but at this stage I'm not I'm not worried about light or dark, just colour as a base. This is gonna be going underneath everything with the watercolour. And then once I've finish the watercolours, I'm just going to like lower the opacity of my drawing so I can barely see it because I, I don't want it to to play in too much to what I'm doing. I want it to just help me figure out where the colours go. Now once my watercolour base is established, I move on to the oils and acrylics and my favourite brushes 
in this again my pigment button is clicked so the colors are going to start mixing and blending and I'm just I've not really got a system I'm just adding in all these details here trying to be loose trying to leave distinct brush strokes and hoping for the best try not to worry too much about what other people think about it one of the biggest pitfalls so I'll put on some music so you can watch the time lapse
and my next favourite thing. Uh, once I've finished um, up all the oil painting, I will go back to watercolours and start picking colours from the background and then throwing them on the canvas. Uh, make sure your tilt function is um, down and then once you start adding high water, high opacity watercolours, they will start to drip down and create these really cool watercolour effects. It's not to everyone's taste, admittedly. I've had people complaining about, you know, they don't like the drips or whatever. So I, I do the right thing and just do them anyway because I like them. It's my artwork, my rules. <laughs> so if you don't like this part, feel free to skip. Um, I love the the fact that with Rebel that it can do this. It's got the AI watercolour effects. It really adds a nice final touch to these paintings, in my opinion. Uh, but you do you. Your artwork, your rules. Some of the watercolour marks I left are a bit much, so I'll go in once I've done all my <laughs> ruining <laughs> and then I'll, I'll erase some of the drips that I see on the right there. There's just a bit too many. So I'll get my eraser and um, tidy them up a wee bit before I call it done. Um, I could keep going, but as I said before, I overwork to death uh, my paintings. So. I want to keep it like this. I like the way it turned out. I love the fact that her expression isn't quite on point with the photo. She's sort of got a sideways kind of glance. It's like, you know, she's it, it's very um, straight faced in the reference and she's got a wee bit of a, I think a quirk of the lip <laughs> in the final piece, which I quite like. Um, I struggled with the lights, uh, the light effect on her face, but I think it turned out okay. Uh, but I'm my own worst critic, so let me know what you think and let me know if you make such a photo yourself, make such a painting yourself. I'd love to see it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please take care and I'll see you next time.